All right, welcome to this new R tip. I'm super excited about this. I love ggplot, and if you do too, then you are gonna love this. This is a new package called ggcormorant, and it's a ggplot2 extension for, for creating correlation matrices. So it's really fantastic. You can create plots like this very simply. It's great for exploratory data analysis when you're just getting used to your new data. Uh, it's great for also creating kind of publication ready correlation plots too. So let's check it out. Um, to get started here, what you're going to want to do is download the newest O33 Cormorant ggplot2. You're just going to do a git pull. Um, if you haven't done so already, the easiest way to get access to the code that I'm showing here, you just sign up for our tips weekly and you're going to get a, um, as soon as you put your email in, you'll get the link to the code. Uh, you'll just do your git pull and you'll download all of the new code. Um, to get started here, we're going to load in some libraries, but before we, we do that, we need to install this Cormorant package from GitHub. Now I will say this, I did have a little bit of a challenge because uh, this is not, this package is not on CRAN yet. So you do have to um, run the installation from GitHub. It can be a little bit challenging. I just had to restart my R session a couple of times in order to be able to get all of the packages updated that I needed. But once I did that, uh, I found that this package is insanely easy to use. So if you, um, all you need to do is you load in the library Cormorant. Um, we're going to load in our tidyverse library and we're ready to get started. So I'm going to be using this MPG data set. Uh, it's basically the um, auto manufacturers. So there's several auto manufacturers, several models of car, and then there's different uh, characteristics of those cars. So like displacement, cylinders, number of cylinders, what year uh, the model was made, um, and so on. Uh, transmission, city fuel mileage, highway, and so on. Um, we can get quick correlation. So if you've never seen this data set, data set before, this is the perfect function. Run Cormorant MPG and very quickly we get a correlation plot and you can see interesting insights. Like for example, right here, uh, we can see that uh, cylinder and displacement are 93% correlated. Positive is blue, uh, negative is red. So uh, city and displacement are negatively correlated, meaning as displacement goes up, the city fuel mileage goes down. Same thing with highway. So you can get a lot of very interesting information out of these plots. You can also see a geom point plot for each of the different variables kind of mapped against each other. So city versus displacement is right here. And you can see there is that indeed that negative relationship. And that's what this red is showing here. Positive is blue. So cylinder as cylinder increases, displacement tends to increase. Um, and that's, that's an interesting insight. So, uh, very cool. And it's super easy to get this plot. Um, you can pop this right into a report very quickly. You can also customize it. So if you're familiar with ggplot, the Cormorant package is kind of like the beginner. So if you've never used ggplot before and you want to just quickly customize it, they've got a dark theme. Um, so you can put that in your report. Um, also, uh, you can further customize it by adding on ggplot to, um, uh, customizations. So things like theme darks, if I want to make this even darker, I can use theme dark and uh, I can add a title here. So uh, again, three lines of code and you've quickly got a really cool looking plot, um, something you could put on a website uh, that showcases some analysis that you're doing. All right. So that's great, but if you want to take it to the next level, they have their own ggplot2 API, which is really cool, but you need to know ggplot2. And I'll talk about how to learn ggplot2 in a minute, um, but this is the kind of thing you can do. When you start adding on ggplot2, they have a lower tri, tri, which stands for the lower triangle. That's all of this data right here. Um, they have the diagonal, so uh, the diagonal is right here, um, and they have the upper tri, which is everything up here. This is the upper triangle. So what you can do is you can start to customize these things. So we're going to use geom point for the lower tri. We're actually going to add a smoother into the lower tri, which is going to put a line through all of this data. Uh, and then we're going to do a heat map on the upper triangle and we're going to add correlation text on the upper triangle too to indicate the um, the relationship and then the diagonals we're going to add the names here and we're going to do a, a density and we're going to use a scale fill 
based on the correlation. So let's check this out. Um, when we put all that together, we get something that looks like this. And you can see you've got the blue smoother here, um, which is really cool. Uh, you've got a heat map up here, which is really nice. Um, and it definitely indicates the relationship. Uh, and everyone knows that understanding your data is super important. You know, definitely in my mind, a correlation matrix helps you. Um, but we can go even further. So there are groups within this data set. Um, the cylinders, for example, um, there's different types of cylinders. You can see that from these humps in here. So there's four, five, six, seven, and eight. So we can lump by those different groups. Um, and what we're gonna do here is I'm just taking, I'm mapping the uh, cylinder, which is the, the discrete column here, four, five, six, seven, eight cylinders in a car. Um, I'm going to map that as my grouping variables. So for the color is going to be adjusted based on the cylinder. The fill is going to be adjusted based on the cylinder. Um, the data I have uh, basically said that MPG, I'm going to turn that into a categorical variable as, instead of a numeric variable. So when I do that, when I run just this piece here, we can see cylinder is now a factor. Um, when I do that, then I can run this code down here. And we've got a really cool correlation plot. And you can see it's done by group. So there's uh, four, five, six, eight cylinders. So I guess there's no seven cylinder cars, um, but you can see what the correlation um, for each of these are. You can also see that um, there's a smoother in here. This is a linear smoother that I've added, uh, which is with the geom smooth. And I set the standard error to false and the method equal to LM. So you can see a negative correlation here uh, with the, the um, eight cylinder and the displacement. Um, but there's a positive correlation between six cylinder and, uh, and, and displacement. Uh, and the same thing with four cylinder. Um, you can see that there is you know, all sorts of different kind of trends going on here in the data and uh, correlation matrix really helps us identify those. So very cool. Um, now you've just gotten kind of a quick tour of the GG uh, core M function, and that comes from core Morant package. Again, this is a ggplot2 extension. If you want to learn how to do ggplot2 from the from scratch, uh, that's definitely needed. If you want to be able to make really cool plots like this, check out my 101 course. That's going to be the easiest way to get up to speed on uh, ggplot2 and I teach you through a project-based framework where that will be really useful. All right, until next time, I'll see you later.